So this is a video I've been meaning to make for a while now, uh, and I think especially with the situation that a lot of us are in with the pandemic and maybe we're quarantined our house with our wife, children, uh, fiance, or whoever you're living with, roommates, I think it's really important that we learn to work with headphones and practice with headphones as much as we can. My wife right now, she's a school teacher, she's upstairs writing lesson plans. Um, so I don't think it's appropriate that I turn on the tube amp and blast. What I want to do today is share with you some of the tips that I've learned uh, how to make the most with headphones uh, when you're practicing direct through Helix. And in fact, if you're not a Helix owner, maybe this can apply to the Fractal or any other headphone um, you know, mediums for practice. If you're a digital modeling person or if you're playing with something like the Boss Katana. I don't know where mine went. I've got the little battery powered one. That's useful too. Um, but I just want to share with you some of the ideas that I've learned. A little bit about myself and my background. For the last like five months, and I'm glad I'm really off right now, but the last five months I was working on a cruise ship where my only opportunity to practice aside from playing on the stage was with headphones, uh, you know, in the comfort of my cabin or whatever. And so I've just kind of learned a little, you know, a couple different tricks with compression, EQ, tuning the amp blocks, you know, making the most of the amp simulation. Um, as well as just dealing with the actual medium of what headphones you're on. For this, I'm going to be using a Telecaster style guitar. This is the Ibanez Talman TM302. It's a pretty affordable guitar. It's like 400 and it's bone stock, no upgrades to it. I feel like it would be cheating if I used the PRS. I mean, y'all have heard that plenty of times and honestly it would sound great through anything. So I'm going to use a guitar which in theory should sound pretty brittle <laughs> uh, with headphones. Now, the headphones that I've been using for practice, these are the Bear Dynamic DT770s. Uh, they're great, and I've heard a lot about them on forums from people asking, you know, recommendations for practice uh, for guitar with headphones. And in fact, I had these long before I got the Helix, um, but they, they've been really great for me. They're great for studio work, too, and if you don't have a set of really nice studio headphones, I definitely recommend these. Another good set. Um, and these are headphones that I had even before the DT770s. These are the Audio-Technica, uh, what are they, the M40s. Uh, so they've got a couple different ranges uh, with this model. They've got the M20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. I find the 40s are most flat balanced. The M50s have a little bit of extra bass. So maybe if you're a bassist, check those out. I'll leave links in the description anyway. Uh, but by far the most important piece of the equation here, besides your guitar, is the headphones that you're working with. A lot of this video is going to be um, teaching you how to shape the the design of the Helix preset with headphones to you know how to tailor it to your certain set of headphones. So if you don't have this model exactly, I hope that this video is still relevant. Basically what you're going to need to do is play around a little bit yourself, experiment and find the you know the strengths and weaknesses of your own system and make the most out of that. All right, so let's jump over to the HX Edit software and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the most important thing here is that we're creating a separate preset from whatever you're using live, right? If you're using my presets especially, I've tuned them to work through front of house systems when I was on the ship, spent a lot of time working with that million dollar system in the theater to get them to sound great. Um, so we're gonna be taking that, we're gonna copy it, so we don't wanna change any of those settings. We're gonna create a different preset just for headphone practice, okay? So we're going to use a model that I based off of the Dr. Z model in there. EGS stands for, hold on, what are we doing here? EGS stands for electric guitar single, single coil. Um, so we'll be using a single coil guitar with it. And then I'm going to name it practice or as close as I can get, whatever. And um, I'm going to delete some of these blocks in here just now. Essentially, I always have a compressor at the end of the chain just to kind of simulate what a tube amp would be doing. A tube amp is naturally compressed, and I feel like when you're playing, even through the amp simulations in Helix, it lacks an element of that. So I usually put a compressor at the end of the chain after everything else. Um, for headphones, I think this is going to work great too. So I'm just leaving that there stock as is. This is kind of a template that I use for all of my presets, something, something similar here. Uh, and if you're going to add this to your own preset, if you're working with a different one, basically bypass it, you know, take the, take the settings here, bypass it, and then tune the gain here to whatever uh, makes it the same volume when it's bypassed and when it's not bypassed. So this is going to be an always on block. You don't have to assign this to a foot controller or anything. All right. So we've got the amp block. 
I always have a little bit of a reverb, especially with your if you're playing with headphones, I would recommend putting an always on reverb. Just a short thing here. Let's see what this sounds like. And that's a spring verb. I might change it to a hall actually. I like leaving the mix a little bit lower. And I'll make the decay longer. Plenty of pre-delay. All right, and that one's gonna be always on. I might lower that just a little bit. Just to create some space because when we've got the speakers on our head, there's not much space there, is there? All right, uh, now the big thing, we're gonna start with the amp block here. This is where we're gonna tune the amp block a little bit to suit the headphones. Um, and I forget where I learned this technique, but essentially you're gonna be turning up the bass uh, and the mid control to suit the headphones. And then we'll be counteracting that with the low cut and the high cut if you need so. Um, I'm gonna get rid of my foot switch five controls here. We don't need that. And let's get a three, get rid of three also. So right now, these are the stock settings. If you don't have this preset, you're welcome to steal that. Try it out on your own device, see if it works for you. And I'm gonna be turning up the bass and the mid control a little bit, probably turning down the treble, and then adjusting the high and the low cut to match that. And a really great way to do this, so you don't have to you know, be playing your guitar and switching back all the time, is you know, set up a little looper here. Let's put this on foot switch one. And I'm just gonna play a riff, and we'll have this looping back so I can adjust it and do everything in real time. I don't have to be jumping between my guitar and the computer. So uh, we've got the loop there, and I'm going to start adjusting the bass, middle, treble controls now. Okay, so you might notice that there's a little bit extra bass there uh, than you would want. I dropped the presence a ton because I thought that was the high frequencies, you know, were kind of annoying in the headphones. Um, so I'm going to compensate for the fact that I have too much bass in the amp head block. I'm going to compensate that with a low cut in the cabinet. <laughs> sounding a little bit better to me already. So that's on the bridge pickup. I mean that Normally that's a pretty brittle pickup, especially on this guitar. I think that sounds pretty full. To my ears, 
it sounds like there's still a little element of boxiness. Uh, so here's another trick. Uh, this is going to deal with the parametric EQ here. This is, in my opinion, the most powerful EQ on the Helix. And I'll, I would put this before the reverb just because I like the natural full sound of the reverb and I, I don't want the EQ to affect that. We're just going to mostly affect the amp block and the cab block here. Okay, so, um, and I'm going to switch to Logic just so I can give you a visual representation of what we're going for. We don't really need to worry about the low cut or the high cut here because we're doing it in the cabinet block. So I switched to Logic just because it has a really nice interface and a, a nice look to it to explain the different controls of, of like frequency, Q, and the gain. Think of it as this. The frequency obviously is going to be the point that your EQ is centered around. Okay, if we're going to do if we want to boost the mid-range-ish, uh, we're going to say that our frequency is over here at 750 hertz. We can move that right or left. Okay, uh, the gain, the gain control in the Helix for high gain, medium gain, low gain, right at whatever, that's going to be essentially the volume that you boost or cut the frequency at. And the Q, this is going to be the how narrow the range is, okay? So if we want to narrow the range here, we're going to have an increase in the Q. So um, the mid Q would go up to 10 if we're doing something very narrow like this. And think of it that essentially what that's going to do is it's going to pick the very specific frequencies right there in the sound and it's going to boost the heck out of those. And it's going to sound very nasal sounding when you do that, depending on what range you're in. Um, and essentially the trick I like to use here is we're going to create a very thin Q, so max that out at the mid control or the bass or whatever, okay? And then we're going to sweep, we're going to increase the gain. If it's at zero, you're not changing anything, even if the Q is adjusted and the frequency is adjusted. The mid gain, when it's at zero, you're not doing anything. If you boost it, obviously you're going to raise that line up. If you drop it, you're going to decrease it. So for now, we're going to boost it, do like 10 decibels. That's going to make it very easy, very noticeable. And we're going to be playing through a little bit. Uh, you can set up the loop again and we're just going to move the frequency very slowly back left and right here and what this is going to do you'll hear it in a second is that it'll help you hear certain frequencies and decide which ones you do want and which ones you don't want for your headphones and this is where really tuning the preset to your headphones is going to come in handy all headphones are going to be a little bit different for the DT770s. They're pretty flat and same with the other headphones I showed. Um, but they still have some peaks and valleys and some stuff that you can hopefully compensate for in the Helix. So essentially what we're going to do is find a frequency that we don't like because it'll be very noticeable when it's boosted like that. And then we're going to do the opposite. We'll take that frequency and just cut it. Okay? So let's work in the Helix now. Again, we've got the Q boosted here. Let's unbypass this block. We've got the Q boosted in the mid-range, right? If you're at 0 dB, this is neutral. If you're going to boost it, that means we're boosting 3.1 kilohertz a lot, okay? I made it maximum just so it's very noticeable. Can you hear that high end kind of like hissing? This is going to be another scenario where it's really good if you have headphones on to hear this. Here, it kind of goes. So I'm searching for a frequency that I don't like in these headphones. And that one's kind of annoying. Now, if I decided from 3.3 all the way to 3.7 that I want to cut, I would lower this cue a little bit so that it effectively makes this cut a little bit wider in the frequencies that it's affecting, okay? So I'm, I'm going to lower the cue a little bit. Gives us a bigger range that we're working with. And then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to drop it a couple decibels. Now 
Now likewise, if there's a really high end frequency you're hearing, even with the high cut and the low cut on the cabs that you want to adjust, you can do the same thing here. Or conversely, in the low frequencies. So that's how I'm creating presets for headphone practice on the Helix. Now one last thing, the clean tone, I mean I've been playing with mostly a clean tone, there's a little bit of overdrive in it. If you want to add in a distorted tone, you're going to notice a lot of excitement in the upper frequencies. So maybe this preset that you've just made works really well with a clean tone, but it doesn't sound good with a distorted tone. You can take this preset, copy it, and then apply those same techniques to further you know, improve the sound, or if you just want to use the same preset for this, maybe just find a happy middle ground between the clean sound and the overdriven sound. If you enjoyed this video, I hope it was helpful a little bit. Make sure to stay tuned to the free Helix preset playlist. And if you haven't already, maybe consider picking up my preset library. We're up to 50 presets now, and it's just a donation of $5 or, or more if you feel so. Whatever you feel like it's worth to you. I will leave a link in the description to these headphones. If you don't have a set of studio headphones, these are not only great for practicing, but for mixing or just you know casual listening. Super comfortable. They've got a great big shell in it big speakers in them, and that's why they're great for practicing, I think. Thanks for watching. Uh, maybe subscribe to the channel, too, if this was helpful to you, and I'll see you in the next one.